So when it was a theory about horror movies in the 1960s, you needed a hot title for a mediocre movie to get people at the box office. This was the one that did it. I remember ads very, very dramatically presented on TV in French and English. Frankenstein must be destroyed. Now, this was another Hammer film directed by Terrence Fisher. Uh, came out in 1969, started Peter Cushing, Freddie Jones, Veronica Carlson, and Simon Ward. The film is the fifth in a series of Hammer films focusing on <coughs> Baron von Frankenstein, who in this entry terrorized those around him in a bid to uncover the sequence of a former associate confined to a lunatic asylum. Now, screenplay by Bert Bat, story by Anthony Nelson Keyes and Bert Bat, produced by uh, Keyes, starring again Cushing Jones, Ward, and Carlson, cinematography by Arthur Grant, edited by Gordon Hales, music by the great James Bernard, distributed by Warner Brothers Seven Arts, came out uh, May 22nd, 69 in the UK, but only uh, February 11th, 70 in the uh, US. Now the US uh, dub had uh, minutes chopped off the the UK uh, presentation. Again, did very good in France with 586,000 admissions. So it, it broke uh, literally close to 1.5 million in France. Now this one, and a very important scene at the start, a doctor is decapitated by a masked man while a thief breaks into an underground lab. The masked man enters the lab carrying the severed head and fights the thief who escapes in horror. The man unmasked himself and is revealed to be Baron Victor von Frankenstein. The thief goes to the police station to report the severed head to Inspector Frisch. Frankenstein, under alias Mr. Fetter, rents a room at a boarding house run by landlady Anna Spengler. Anna's fiancé, Carl Holtz, is a doctor at the asylum where Frankenstein's former assistant, Dr. Frederick Brandt, was committed after going insane. Now, after discovering Carl has been stealing narcotics in order to support Anna's ailing mother, Frankenstein reveals his true identity and blackmails Carl into helping him kidnap Brandt so he can get the secret formula of the experiment. While stealing equipment from a warehouse for Frankenstein's new lab, Carl and the Baron are caught by the guard. Carl panics and stabs him. Frankenstein, now with a further hold on Carl, uses him and Anna to kidnap Brent. He takes him back to the house where he built a lab in the basement. Carl eventually confides Anna about killing the guard and begs her to leave, fearing she may go to prison for being accessory to the murderer, but she refuses. Now, meanwhile, Brent has a heart attack, prompting Frankenstein and Carl to kidnap the asylum's administrator. Professor Richter to transplant Brandt's brain into his body. That night, while Anne is getting ready for bed, Frankenstein enters her room and rapes her. The next day, Frankenstein and Carl succeed in transplanting Brandt's brain into Richter's body and bury Brandt's body in the garden. Brandt's wife, Ella, recognizes Frankenstein in the street and confronts him about her husband's kidnapping. Frankenstein assures her he has cured her husband's mental illness, but does not let her, her see him. She refuses to believe in him and goes to Frisch. Now, while the creature recovers, Frankenstein and the lovers relocate to a deserted manor house when the police begin to close in. In the lab, the creature awakes and is horrified by his appearance. He scares Anna, who stabs him, causing him to escape. Frankenstein returns and finds the creature gone. In a rage, he fatally stabs Anna and goes after the creature. The creature makes it to his former home, but his wife refuses to accept him as her husband. Wanting revenge on Frankenstein and knowing the Baron will eventually track him there, he allows his wife to go free and pours liquid paraffin around uh, the house. Now, Frankenstein soon arrives with Carl following inside the house. The creature makes fires to trap him. Frankenstein finds the papers of discovery and flees, but is ambushed by Carl and they fight. The creature emerges, knocks Carl out, and carries the screaming Frankenstein into the burning house, where they both presumably die. Leave it open for a sequel. Now, this, a very violent movie that uh, was a little bit longer than a normal Hammer film, like at 100 minutes U.S. and Canada and the States, you know, a lot going on. Now, the scene where Frankenstein rapes Anna was filmed over the objections of both Peter Cushing and Veronica Carlson for obvious reasons. Uh, and director Terrence Fisher, who halted it when he felt enough was enough. It was not in the original script, but the scene was added in insistence of Hammer executive James Carassus, who was under pressure to keep the American distributors happy. That's what it was like, more and more sex and violence in the late 1960s. Now, as it stands right now, the scenes featuring Thoroughly Walters and Inspector Frisch were also late additions to the original script. 
They have been described as unnecessary, adding an unwelcome element of comedy into suspenseful story and also making the film for, for many too long. Now, ironically, in 78, the Welsh television station HIV uh, Seymour Wales broadcast a version dubbed in the Welsh language called Riyad Denistro Frankenstein, a more or less literal translation of the English title. This is one of three films that were dubbed in the Welsh, another being Shane with Alan Ladd. Both these were rebroadcast on the new Welsh language channel S4C on its launch in 1982. Now, Variety liked it, calling the film a good enough example of its low-key type, with artwork rather better than usual, less obvious black uh, black plots, uh, back back plots, etc. A minimum of artless dialogue, good lensing by Arthur Grant, and a solid all-around cast. The multi-film Bolton called it the most spirited hammer horror in some time. The crudity still remained, of course, but the talk of transplants and drugs seemed to have injected new life in the continuing story of Baron Frankenstein. Now, Frankenstein must be destroyed. It currently holds an average 70% on Rotten Tomatoes. Now, let's get into what I'm saying here. When Frankenstein must be destroyed was previewed or promoted, you know, see the terror of the big screen back again. Peter Cushing is Frankenstein, and Frankenstein must be destroyed. And they were playing that up. And the fact was, the the title, I go back to, to Robert Evans, the poster will sell the movie, but the two-minute TV ad will sell the movie as well. And what they learned by the late 1960s, especially for the U.S. and Canadian viewers, you knew what you were getting with Hammer, but you had to give them a little bit extra. And the titles became, not say more bizarre, but more, you know, to uh, like a, an audio anticipation. You know, welcome to the circus. See the rides, right? This is what horror movies were back then. There were a circus. You get everything at a horror movie. You're going to get traditional hammer horror, a little bit of a mix of the new style or the, the more open-ended because we're getting away from the uh, the studio system and more what you call dramatic interpretations with a modern spin. But I would give this four stars out of four. I tell you why. When I saw it, that turned me on to the other hammer movies. And if this is the first hammer movie you're going to see, you'll want to see the other Frankensteins and the other Peter Cushing Dracula movies, and Christopher Lee. Although Christopher Lee's not in this movie, his ghost, God bless his soul, he's passed away now, same as Peter Cushing, his ghost is all over this. Because every Hammer movie, it's Cushing or Lee. The movie seems like uh, lost without Cushing or lost without Lee. It would have been nice to have Christopher Lee in this movie as one of the supporting characters just to see, you know, what I call the best the best male tag team besides Newman and Redford in movie history. I don't know if you Hammer could have been so successful with with these movies not having Cushing or Lee or like uh, the pair. Like I said, or it's like uh, Mantle and Maris. You know what I'm saying? If one doesn't hit the home run, the other guy will. But I give it four to four because it was a it really impacted my childhood. It made me more interested in movies. I think it was only five or six years old. My mother was worried about seeing that. And dad said, they're all, they're all, it's Frankenstein. It's not like sucking blood. I mean, they're taking brains out and doing stuff. I mean, we read comic books like that for years with the DC and, you know, the Marvel imprint. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's our latest in our Hammer uh, reviews. If you like what we're doing, give us a like, comment, subscribe, or share. By the end of 2023, we're reaching 2,000 subscribers and 1 million hits. If you want to be part of that legacy, those legacy numbers, and you play a big part of that, please encourage your friends to subscribe or share. Uh, we are getting great responses to our Hammer movies, thanks to our good buddy John Walco for instigating this. But you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, if nobody talks about Hammer in a modern era, we're forgetting how good these movies were. And, and the only reason why horror is so big now, the grandkids that are 60, like my age, 55 to 60, of the people that brought to Hammer movies, there would be no Hammer genre, where, uh, like I said, horror genre were not for Hammer. They were to the start. It's like Spaghetti Westerns, Good, the Bad, the Ugly. We still have Spaghetti Westerns now. You got to understand there's a connection with every horror fan. And like the modern horror there, it's not as good as Hammer because you don't have the British style. British horror, I think, is the best, in my opinion. Thanks for listening. Bye.